Yeah? Yeah. Good to go? Can you give me a level D? A one, two, three, four. Perfect. Ready? Perfect. And we are back between two Yetis with Dean from uh, Suzuki. How yeah, are you, I'm Dean? Yeah, Dean Corbus here. How are you doing today? Is it Suzuki Marine or Suzuki Engines or... Well, I know Suzuki does a lot of stuff. Well, the logo set, we go by Suzuki Marine, but our website, Suzuki Facebook, Okay. Uh, Suzuki Outboards on the Facebook. Though. Very cool. And like I was just saying, day five of the Miami show, how's the traffic been for you? Pretty good? Traffic's been awesome. And, uh, people really embrace this location. Yep. It's really nice because we have the tents inside. Check out all the equipment you want, boats, motors. And then you can go right outside the door and the boats are in the water. So you can go for demo rides. Go for a demo. I mean, what kind of boats out there have your product on? Do you know of any off the top of your head? Yeah, we have Twin V out there. We have Dusky. Nice. Yeah, we have Invincible, we have Freeman, we have Sea Cat, Sea Chaser. Very cool. We have Baker. So a lot. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what's new for the show? We have then? over 10,000 horsepower in the water. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> what's uh, new for the show? What do you guys brought along that's uh, leading in the industry? Well, for this year, for Suzuki, we just came out with our new DF350A. Uh, was this one here? Yes, yeah, so it's a 4.4 liter V6. Okay. Uh, Dual fuel injectors per cylinder. Right. It's 12 and 12 to 1 compression pistons. Right. And we the very interesting uh, revolutionary is a dual propeller setup. Is this unique to Suzuki? This dual propeller? It's unique to any outboards uh, on the market right okay. now. There's dual contra rotating propellers. Okay. So what that does is if you can imagine, you, know, you can always build a motor with more and more horsepower. Absolutely. Yeah. And, but just like a race car, when you add more horsepower and you have a skinny tire, you step on the gas, you're just going to do a burnout. You're not going anywhere. Absolutely. And the same thing happens in the water. It would be cavitation, you know, when you give the uh, motor power, but nothing happens. The engine revs up and it starts moving slowly. Right. Well, this is like adding a wide drag tire to the back of your car. Yep. Absolutely. In this case, two propellers. They're spinning opposite each other. Interesting. And it gets over twice the traction. So does that get you out of the hole faster? A oh, lot, lot faster. Immediately, you know, when you're in a boat and you're at the dock and you put in reverse and they kind of wall her backwards a little bit, nice yeah, yeah. and slow. With this, when you put it in reverse, that boat's backing up whatever direction you have the motor. So if you have it straight back, it'll move right now, straight back. So if they're moving opposite directions, how does it, actually I'm gonna answer my own question here, when you put it in reverse, they're moving, it moves, the direction the fins moves the water the same Correct. way, right? Correct, yeah, because you have a, a right hand rotation propeller and a left hand rotation propeller. Okay. And uh, I can reach over there. Can you stand up? And uh, I'll show you. We can. We give it a go. Yeah, yeah. So if you spin it, you can see one goes one way, one goes the other. That's fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and so in here you show yeah, how it. Yeah. Well, goes these back gears are always, always on each other. Yeah. And the transmission, the shifting is actually up in here. Fantastic. That's very cool. I mean. Uh, I've been told by many people that Suzuki's a great engine because it's easier to work on. It's, they're saying the most reliable engine. I mean, is there truth to that? I mean, obviously from Suzuki. Well, I, I work for that. Suzuki, so I would say that, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I find everything I, I do with those motors is uh, it's thought out, well-planned. You know, if you have to take wrenches to it to change the water pump, it's uh, fairly easy to do. You don't. You don't have to really uh, overthink it. Now, is it all computer controlled like the other ones that I've seen? Yes, as well? this is all uh, fly by wire, mm -hmm. throttle and shift. Because I, I was saying the other guys that uh, I used to have a Yamaha 250 EDI. Right. And I was amazed. It was a 2004 boat. They just came, plugged the computer in, it told it exactly what was wrong. Is that where every outboard motor has gone to be like fully computerized? Yes, we have uh, a port on there on the engine under the cowling where the tech can plug in okay. and it tells them the whole history of how the engine's been run. Cause I Which see is kind of interesting because uh, a lot of times a customer will say, oh yeah, no, I never take it over 3,500. You go, and that's that will, interesting, the computer doesn't say that. And that will tell you, like, yeah, no, oh, you yeah. over this many, many yeah. times. Dear, dear, I mean, because <clears throat> you're all in this one tent, you guys and the other guys come out with stuff every year, right? Do you? Every year. So are we gonna see competitors using this dual system next well, year? Well, we have a patent on that, so if they have a find a way to 
get around <laughs> that, they might be able to. But it's like every time someone comes out with something, there's always a race to try and make it yeah. better. Every, the, well, it's good, it's good competition. Everybody absolutely. wants to have something better. They want to be uh, top of the hill, the uh, top dog. Absolutely. So the, and that ends up better for the customer. Mm -hmm. They're getting the latest and greatest equipment available. Absolutely. I mean, what's... Is there a horsepower war going on right now? I mean, like you said, you can have as many horsepower as you want in the engine, but if it can't get it out into the water, it's kind of useless. Right. Do we see horsepower becoming the main push now, or is it becoming better technology, more fuel efficiency, or where's well, it going to go in the future? It, it's all. People are always interested in how much fuel yeah. you're burning. So if you if you made something that had 500 horsepower but it got t terrible gas mileage, no most gonna... people would really want it because you know, it costs a lot of money. You have a couple hundred thousand dollars in your boat, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars in your engine. You're gonna have a big truck to tow it. Yeah. At some point in time, you need to, you need to be able to afford to actually use it. Absolutely. So fuel economy is becoming more and more prevalent. Is anything else like weight or? Well, yeah, and everything every year, uh, the engine manufacturers are making when they make a new product, they're making it lighter. That's always a good thing. That's always better. So it's not just about horsepower these days. Correct. It's, it's about the whole package. And do you find customers who come around are educated in that, or do people just come and ask for horsepower and you have to educate no, them? No, into no, the no. They, they, people, people usually know what they want before they get here. Now that's it. That's the question I was going to ask. People know what they want before they arrive. They know about what they want, and they just need some help with some questions they maybe didn't get answered online. Interesting. That's very, very. How did you get involved in engines, anyway? Has this been something you've been doing for a long time? Yeah, I've been working for Suzuki since 1988. I was about 12, I believe, when I started. <laughs> so you've worked your whole life throughout school and everything with Suzuki. Yeah, we. I was always boating as a kid. I can remember at five, six years old, going with my dad fishing. Yep. And uh, going out in the boat. We had a great time. Absolutely. I mean, uh, where did you grow up? Down here in South I Florida. I grew up in Southern California. Southern California. And you always had Suzuki products back then as well, yeah? Well, no. Uh, Suzuki didn't start importing uh, outboard motors until 1977, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Because that was came about... in with the Spirit outboard. Right. Okay. And have... Have to, I would have to double check the year on that. No, but no, that's no. about in there. <laughs> okay, we can double check. So that. Spirit outboard was originally it was a two-stroke, and then and then Suzuki had made that, and then they came in. Uh, market it themselves as That's well. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So what can we expect at the next boat show? Something well, else extra well, cool? You know, um, when we introduced this in June at Boca Raton, right, okay. um, our vice president, Gus Blakely, was talking with the president of the company, Mr. Suzuki, and the head engineer. The name for the this- The head of the company is Mr. Suzuki. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> right? <laughs> and that this, this uh, project was called N1. You know, we gave it a, a secret name so to speak or a code name so yep. nobody would know we were talking about 350 horsepower n1 was for new one right okay so gus is talking to mr suzuki said okay they, now that we're done with the n1 we need to start working on the n2 and mr suzuki said no we're going to start working on the n3 <laughs> and the head engineer is going oh no <laughs> so we're going to leapfrog so we'll see what happens but the uh, Suzuki factory engineers are always working on something, always. And that just makes, like we were just talking earlier, better for the consumer, there's greater product diversity, and uh, yeah, should make for a fun trade-off with the other guys. Right? Yeah? right, absolutely. Well, we gotta keep everybody else busy, too. Absolutely, you know, you gotta keep moving forward and uh, making it great, but Dean, thank you very much you for bet. your time. You Hope bet. you have a great end of the show, and we'll see you next time. All right, take care. And we'll see the N3 when it comes N3. out. N3, N3. And we'll see that Fort Lauderdale, maybe? Uh, well. That would be nice. Did Mr. Suzuki ever come to these shows? I mean, uh, no. Actually, when he was at Boca Raton, that was the first time he'd been in the United States for an intro. Is he, is he ever going to come back, or is he like, you guys take care of it, I'll stay over here? And well, he, oh, he's, if you can imagine, he's a busy guy. He's taking care of a worldwide corporation. Because he just so, doesn't do marine, then, does he? He does no, the cars. No, 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 no. Cars, cars and cars uh, and planes, motorcycles, ATVs, scooters. Outboard motors. They also, uh, Suzuki has a division, they make houses, little. Really? Yeah. 
did not know that. They get they make all kinds of products. You know, obviously we don't import everything here. Absolutely, but he's in charge of that. He's, a, he's the boss of everything. He's the boss of the company. So how much of the marine division takes up in the big company scale? I mean, is it just a small We're, we're pretty portion? small uh, across the whole company, as you can imagine. Automobiles is the uh, biggest Huge. portion. Yeah, because it's, it's worldwide. We have plants all over the world. Absolutely. And servicing and warranty on these? Is it your typical six years like you get with the other guys? We have three-year uh, factory warranty, and we offer a three-year extended protection plan. Okay. And that gives you the six years of coverage. Final question for you. Yes. Obviously, there's been a lot on the news we saw about theft of outboard engines, especially in South Florida and lower units. Is there anything that Suzuki is doing to try and help combat that? Or is it something that the owner really needs to make sure their boat is kept? Well, you, do, you're, you need to secure your equipment, yeah. you know, whether it be in a locked facility with hopefully an alarm or some guys put them in their garage or in a big barn somewhere. Absolutely. Um, I mean, obviously on the water. There's very little you can do if someone wants to steal it. Though, if they want to steal it, yeah, their best bet, uh, a lot of guys, they steal the whole boat. Yeah. And then they take what they want and they're at leisure. But uh, lower units, now this would be a tough one to steal because it's only going to fit this motor on this. I get you. If you were to pick a different uh, horsepower size, it might fit a wider range because they're stealing something to sell it, resell it. Yeah, and, uh, that everybody wants. Right, for certain for needs, for, yeah. yeah for so. certain wants and needs. Interesting. Well, thank you very much again. You bet. <laughs> Thanks.